On the 19th of June 2010, a historic event took place in Yola, Adamawa State. It was the installation of Dr. Muhammadu Barkindo Aliyu Mustafa as the 12th Lami to Adamawa. It was an event that last took place 57 years ago. Most people who witnessed the event were not even born when the last Lamido was installed in 1953. To situate the event within its proper context, it is important to go back in history and recall the commencement of the journey 200 years earlier. In the year 1809, a brave soldier known as Modi Adama made a journey to Sokoto, the seat of the Caliphate, and his mission was to secure the blessings of the Sultan to lead the social reform process in the southern flank of the larger Sokoto Caliphate. Having ascertained that his mission was genuine and his courage and abilities assured, Shehu Usman Damfodio appointed Modi Adama the leader of the South on the 5th of March 1809. Being a renowned scholar and an astute administrator, Modi Adama created vassals, appointed flag bearers, and established the largest and most heterogeneous emirate within the Sokoto Caliphate. His emirate extended to areas within the northeastern states of Nigeria, most of northern Cameroon covering the north, extreme north and Adamawa provinces, and the Bagirmi region of Chad Republic. Modi Adama was initially based in Gurin, which was the first capital of the new emirate. He later moved to Ribadu in 1831, then to Jogoli, and finally to Yola in 1841. Though he was de facto ruler of the emirate, his major concern was scholarship. Hence, he was content with the title of Modibo. He held sway for 38 years. When he died, he passed on the legacy of the new emirate to his eldest son. That legacy had been passed on from the days of Modi Adama to all those who ruled Fombina Emirate, which he established. And in all of these years, only once did a son take over from his father. That was Lamido Lawal, who took over from Modi Adama. But the 12th Lamido Adamawa is collecting the legacy as it was handed over in the beginning. He is collecting it from his father, as did Lamido Lawal from Modi Adama. This is indeed the glorious passing of the legacy of Modi Adama to Dr. Muhammad Barkindo Aliyu Mustafa, almost in all original form in 1847. When Modi Adama died in 1847, he had established an emirate but resisted the temptation to discard his scholarly title of Modi He was more a philosopher and guide than a ruler. Muhammad Lawal, who is the eldest son of Modi Adama, took over in 1847, created the title of Lamido or ruler. He ruled for 35 years and was succeeded by his younger brother known as Umaru Sanda in 1872. Lamido Sanda expanded the emirate and consolidated on the process of creating a functional palace. He ruled for 18 years. Lamido Zubairu took over in 1890. The ascension of Lamido Zubairu in 1890 coincided with intense European colonial interest in most parts of Africa. Lamido Zubairu struggled to preserve the sovereignty of his emirate. He fought a spirited battle against the British colonialists. However, the superior firepower of the Europeans resulted in the capture of Yola. Lami Rosubairu fled and organized an 18-month resistance. The first three brothers who took over from Modi Adama established an effective Lamu or rulership with a father or Emir's court made up of title holders, courtiers, and palace guards. The fall of Yola and the resistance of Lami Rosubairu is a watershed in the history of Fombina Emirate. What is the significance of the fall of Yola and the Zubairo resistance? The attack on Yola happened on 2nd September 1901. 
uh, in order to show you the importance of this attack is that the commander of the contingent that attacked Yola was Colonel Morland. And Colonel Morland was the overall commander of the West African Frontier Force based at Jabba. So uh, this tells you how serious the British uh, took uh, 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 Fombina and also how challenging the thought of Lamido Zubairo uh, because he was uh, in his diplomatic uh, relations with the Europeans he maintained a considerable relationship with the French and had some form of uh, European arms uh, with him and so uh, when it became very clear to them that they needed to take over this part of the world uh, they hurriedly did it because if they didn't do it in the early part of September and they allowed the river Benue to dry, it means they will not be able to attack Yola until uh, the following year, uh, 1902. And the significance here lies in trying to understand the crisis of the period of people coming to terms with an invading power, an invading power which has superior arms, which was coming uh you know under the under 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 a guise of a european power but at the same time also the you know the the muslims of the area also fearing that it was also uh, a non-muslim power and they are not sure of the integrity of that particular power in safeguarding their religious beliefs in safeguarding isn't it you know their way of life and i think this was the crux of the crisis most of the emirate fell under german conquest and the germans named the area adamawa out of immense respect for modipo adama and indeed his successors. Initially, the area under British control, which includes the seat of the Lamido in Yola, was called Yola province, but it too became Adamawa province. Thus, Modibo Adama has the unique distinction of having two states in two countries bearing his name. The British administration went further to re-establish the house of Modibo Adama as the legitimate rulers of Adamawa Emirate and their title of Lamido was also preserved. Bobo Amadou, son of Modibo Adama, was appointed Lamido in 1901. He ruled for eight years till 1909 and was succeeded by Lamido Iya, who had the shortest reign of just one year. Lamido Abba ruled from 1910 to 1924, a period of 14 years. He was succeeded by Lamido Bello Maigari, who reigned from 1924 to 1928. Lamido Mustafa, the ninth Lamido, sat on the throne for 18 years. In 1946, Lamido Amadou took over and lasted till 1953. All the six Lamibe who ruled Adamawa Emirate under British rule had problems with the new overlords. What was responsible for this? There was this fragmentation of the emirate. There was this problem of adjusting to for foreign rule. And then also there was the fear of Mahdi. And when politics came, the problem with Nepal. All these are combinations which created an uh, uneasy relationship between the Lamibe of Fombina or Adamawa and the British colonial overlords. A lot of problems that were coming to intervene between the execution of their responsibilities, or at least the conception of their responsibilities, the way they saw what they were supposed to do, and the conceptions of the British overlords, and the way they conceived what the emirs in teaching were supposed to implement. And I think uh, this was what led to a lot of these problems. The 11th Lamido of Adamawa was Lamido Ali Mustafa, who had the longest reign of 57 years, from 1953 to 2010. His leadership of the Emirate was unique in both style and approach. He created a dictum of continuity and change. He expanded on the structure and functions of the councils and created diversity in the ranks of his title holders. He survived the intrigues of colonial administrators because he recognized the political separation of the Emirate as a necessary reality. He also had Western education which gave him a broader mind to cultivate and maintain relations on a diplomatic and fraternal level, both with the colonialists and the other ceded areas in Chad and Cameroon. He was a great team player who worked very closely with most of the title holders and won their confidence. Some of the title holders speak 
on his leadership style. The late Lamido is very honest and reliable, and he takes everybody al uh, along with him. During his tenure, he appointed so many Christians in the council. That is, all, almost all the, most of the districts were represented in the council during his tenure. And we never have any conflict <coughs> within the other uh, confine. Everybody knows that. He's respected throughout Nigeria, throughout Africa. You only have to mention about Lamida Liu, especially in areas like uh, uh, Cameroon, you know, uh, which used to be Fumbina. <coughs> they always come to pay homage. To he was a great leader, very patient very understanding and very accommodating and that is what informed the fact that Islam Ibn she has been able to bring all the various ethnic nationalities within Adama and Fombina together and when I'm talking about Fombina I'm talking about the old Adama which means the whole of the present Adama in Nigeria the whole of the northern Cameroons, and then part of the Chad Republic. Upon the death of Lamido Aliyu Mustafa in March 2010, a heavy cloud descended on Yola and Adamawa Emirates. 